So this is the control board for my pump system. Let's see if we can fix this. So today I'm trying to fix this pump, which isn't shutting off. It just runs and runs and runs. So there's the control board. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I can see a reed switch. I'm going to take that control board out and I'll just go and check it, make sure the reed switch is working and stuff like that. Check that board out in case it's a bad reed switch, which is quite common. We'll look at that afterwards, but there's also a pressure control system. There's like this big lump on the back here, which does something. I've got no idea what that does. Might have to pull that apart as well and find out. But I'm guessing it's got like a diaphragm or something in there, but maybe a plunger. But uh, yes, yeah, so it's not turning off. So as you would have seen just now in the previous clip, the pump is running continuously. It's just not shutting off. It's just pumping, pumping, pumping. I found the pump running this morning and the thing was so hot, I'm, I'm really concerned about the well-being of the pump. It has developed a new water leak as a result. I need to sort that out too, but that's not why it's not shutting off. The leak is a result of the not shutting off, not the other way around. But this is interesting. It's got a reed switch on the back here, another one on the top. And it's completely isolated from the actual water system, which is quite nice. I'm guessing it's got a magnet or something, which is on a post, which is on the actual water system. So when it's got pressurized, it moves backwards and forwards with pressure, which will then activate these reed switches. So my suspicion is that one of these reed switches are bad. It could also be a mechanical problem with the plunger. Maybe the plunger's stuck. Maybe it's had some debris go through the pump and it's blocking the movement. It could be a physical problem. So what I'm going to do is hook up power to this and we'll basically just test it in, get some magnets near these and we'll see if we can get it to, uh, to work by using magnets on it. It's obviously using a capacitor dropper, so we've got voltage comes in, earth is together, neutral is together, and we've got line here and V there. I should have paid attention to which way around they were before disconnected them. The wires are placed here anyway, you can't get the wires mixed up, so I should actually just pay attention to which way around they are. I think that's, this one's coming from this relay here, so I think that'll be the pump, the bottom one's pump. So this is line in, so L, like, that's why it's LN, I think and also UVs for the pump. So line comes in, you've got some mobs. You've got feed going straight to the relay, so it's passing this relay. It's shoving 240 volts straight through. And it's just tapped off here through a capacitive dropper. It comes over here, which then disappears into one of the layers in the board, I think. Oh, there we go. It comes down here to this pad. And the neutral is over this side of the board as well. So it's obviously a 24 volt relay, so it's obviously 24 volts power supply on this board here. And I can see what may be a voltage regulator just here. 8C646, it's also a diode just there. So I don't think it's going to be any discrete circuitry. This is only a few years old, so it's only been th it's three years old, right? So I'm thinking it's probably more physical problem than an electronic problem. It's a bit new to be an electronic problem. So I'm thinking it's not likely to be a problem with that. Looking at reed switches, because reed switches do go bad, especially if they're on and off, on and off, on and off. So that bit of transistor has turned the relay on and off just here. So that could be a voltage regulator. It's got reset circuitry here, so it must be a little microcontroller just there, which is doing everything. I think it's a pick, is it? F409 slash SN, I think that says, without using a magnifier. Let's have a look. There you go. That's the best lighting angle I can get, I think. Yeah, I think I was right. F609 slash SN. Or is this 6091, is it, maybe? And there's that regulator there, which I was talking about. Just there. So, yeah, it's an interesting circuit. I'm not going to reverse engineer the whole thing or anything like that. Obviously, it's footprint there for something. A few parts which aren't populated. I'm guessing there's options or different versions of this. So there's a rear view. And we'll flip it around. And there's the front view. So, anyway, let's power this thing up and see if we can diagnose it. Right, here we are. I've been my slightly dangerous setup. If you're working with main stuff, take lots of precautions. Be careful what you're touching. Make sure everything's definitely dead. I've got a two core wire here which I showed in a previous mail bag on an item which I purchased saying these things come in handy. It's coming in handy. So unfortunately there's no earth wire but you know. So I've got the hopping meter over here that's going to measure the voltage and current and stuff like that. And I've got my magnet here which I'm going to put by these reader switches. And then I want to back it somewhere wherever that is up there. So all I'm going to do is just try basically put this by the reed switches and see. I can actually see that switch moving. I'm going to basically use the magnets on these two switches, see if they activate by looking at the voltage that's coming out. This is not insulated, so I have to make sure I don't touch anything with it because that could be potentially hazardous. Let's do this, let's turn the power on. You can see it thinks it's on. Good output, 230 volts. Let's put this near the switch. Yeah, nothing. The yellow switch, nothing. 
no reaction to so the re-switches don't appear to be doing anything now what I should do is actually check to see if they're open or closed now because I've got a capacitive dropper there's probably still voltage floating around so what I should do is actually probe across these and check for them switching with a magnet so let's test this reed switch here someone commented about oh you shouldn't you know, need more than one or two multimeters sometimes you want more than one or two multimeters I might even have to hook up another one to the other switch individually we might have to have three out we'll see so this one is switching kind of it's not always switching Maybe it's to do with the angle I'm at. No, that reed switch is definitely not always switching. This is quite a strong magnet too. So if I get this to switch, I'll take this back off again because I'm shoving high voltage through here. Don't have to blow my meter up. So let's turn this back on. I'll see if I can get this to switch. No, that's not doing anything. So it's likely, although this one is seemingly a bit flaky, probably isn't that one. We'll try the other one. Okay, hooked up the other switch. Let's try this one. Hmm. That is switching. Barely. But when it is switching the resistance looks okay. So we'll take these off, power it up again, and we'll try and get this one to switch whilst I've got it on. Nothing happening. That's curious. Could it be the relay is jammed? I heard it click though. Sure heard it click from that relay. Yeah, the relay's clicking. You can hear it. So the next thing I do is look at voltage coming out of this. We can clip onto these relay legs and then we'll try activating those reed switches again. Okay, let's try this. 19 volt. Hmm. Okay, let's try this reed switch here. That's not changing. Another reed switch, which I'm trying to reach around, which is never a good thing. Yeah. That's not switching either. Hmm. Well, so the voltage to relay is not switching off. If I do either reed switch, it's not changing. So the switches are definitely switching. What else is there? Well, did it have to be switching in the right combination? Maybe. Maybe one has to be on, one has to be off, or both on, both off. Don't know, maybe. The one might be low pressure, one might be high pressure, so I would have thought this would be the one which turns the thing on and off. So the next thought is then switching transistor over here. That's my next thought. Well, on close inspection, as you can see on camera, that's actually marked as D2, not Q2. So that should be a diode package. So that must be a suppression diode for the coil. Flyback suppression. Is that a switch transistor? Is that BC646? Or HC646? I think I need to trace around, find out whether this is feeding this diode or the coil here. I need to trace out where the coil goes to and feedback from that and see what's going on. We've got some switching transistors up here for the LEDs. There's not much going on here. I mean, it's just a microcontroller. There's also another transistor just there. I mean, it could be that one. A4W. Is that what those ones are? Can't really see. It's a bit small. Anyway, I'll figure this out. Right, I've spent a bit of time reverse engineering this thing, as you can see. I've, I'm not quite sure if this is right. It seems really weird to me. I'm not sure about this bit here for these transistors. It just, although this is what it traces out to being, it doesn't really make sense. It looks like they're powering the relay through an LED, which is weird. It looks like a microcontroller basically puts out one signal here to that transistor here, which turns on the LED and the relay at the same time. And the power LED is basically tapped off that a little bit and it's also got its own supply rail for that and that sort of stuff so power on is always on and pump on feeds off that kind of and there's a microcontroller over here made a few mistakes you know 
I haven't tied it up, I don't really care, I only do this probably once anyway. But I think I've basically got the diagram kind of done, reverse engineered, so it's basically, you know, as I said, you've got a capacitive dropper over here, got a 2 watt resistor, I think it's 2 watt anyway, just there. A 4 bit drip fire, a midi. Then you've got some capacitance and stuff like that, and you've got, a, I believe it's a voltage regulator, I haven't actually tested this yet, but I believe it's a voltage regulator, we can actually check for that. It's just down there, if I can tap onto one of the supplies from somewhere, I can actually figure out what that is. Now one of the read relays comes from R51, RD1, which is the top one, so I'll probably tap onto one of those legs on there and just see what voltage I get relative to that, maybe. Although, I shouldn't need to actually, because I'm measuring RD2 and RD1 with these meters, and so one of them actually give me the voltage of that supply anyway, so I shouldn't really need to do it. One of these will tell us what the supply voltage is for that regulator. So what I'm going to do is test each read relay with the meters by measuring voltage across them. And I'm going to try doing different combinations of, in case I need to have one on, one off, or both on, both off, kind of thing, just to see what's going on. If I switch those, and I can see the voltage is changing here, so the inputs to the microcontroller, and the output still doesn't change, then it's probably the microcontroller which is fried. The transistors here seem fine, so they are the switching transistors to the LEDs, and also does the relay through the LED. Weirdly. It's odd. So a diode there, diode there from some signal pull-ups and stuff like that and diode steering. I don't know, it's an old circuit. It seems overly complicated. Anyway, let's turn it on. So it's a 5 volt supply and they're both reading 5 volts right now. And you can see the run LED is on. So let's get my magnets. I'll try and do one. I won't rest my hand on the desk like that. There you go, that's switched. Barely. Doesn't want to switch. Like that, here we go. Try and switch the other one. So both off. Oh, see that it drops out. Come on. It did drop out for a second there. I'm trying to be careful because of the voltages involved here. It's off. It's now switching. It seems like it has to have a combination of them. Maybe it's a sequence. Okay, so it did actually switch then. That's good. I'm trying to do this, mindful that these aren't insulated. I'm trying not to make sure I touch anything I shouldn't be touching with them. So pulsing it on and off is not mattering. Can I do this one from here? There we go. Right. So the control board is working, which means it must be a physical problem with the actual actuator. Or it could be these re-switches are a bit flaky, maybe it's not quite switching properly. That's still a possibility. Yeah, I thought it would be interesting anyway. So I'm going to go and pull apart the mechanics of it and see if it fixes it as well. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Yeah, now you can see it. So I just got back from being down the road and I picked up a brand new replacement pressure switch. I actually believe I could probably fix the other one, but I'm not entirely certain of what I'm supposed to have on the end. We've obviously established that the electronics seem to be working correctly, so I'm not going to worry about the electronics side. So the problem is on this side of it here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull it apart, I've got it plugged in already, but I'm going to pull it apart, I'm going to demonstrate the plunger system and everything I've found on this thing which I believe is wrong. So I'm going to take this apart. out. So it's just the housing, there's a big ass spring that sits in there. This does not get wet in that side. This side here is just like that and interestingly that bit looks the same. That is magnetic, I can feel it. Just very slightly. 
Yes, it is. Okay. Well, that's curious. Maybe it's got weak then. Hmm. Anyway, let's have a look inside here again. On top of that, it just pops us back inside here, like that. Just a uh, non-return valve. Well, that looks the same. Doesn't look any different inside. I checked the other one, it didn't, didn't seem magnetic. Maybe just get weak. This looks exactly the same as the other one. There's probably no fur point in going further than that. But we will demonstrate this. So let's power this up. So we have two lights on. Let's put the cover back on again, actually. You might be able to see it a little bit better. This seems to sharp better that way. Does it? Oh, it's just pop off now. Interesting. Here you go. That switched. Oh, that's even more interesting. Because... My one, the other one, isn't doing that. Hmm, maybe there is an electronics problem, which I couldn't detect. I'm going to go and take this off the other pump, or the other switch unit, bring it in here, we'll do the same testing on that one, see if it switches with that. Alright, so here's the other one, the original pump, so it's got this interesting depression here as well, maybe that's something to do with it. So we'll just shove this in here, and we'll see if we can turn the thing on and off. Is working. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe the electronics are weak then. Maybe those reed switches are on the weak side. I'm saying failure. This one's actually saying a failure. The other one didn't do anything like that when it had some weird stuff going on. Maybe the processor in the other unit is faulty. Because I've never seen failure on the other one, but this has done it. Maybe I'll swap the whole thing out, maybe I'll swap out all the guts of it. Put the new piston assembly on the other one, because this is definitely a much fresher rubber seal on there. Keep this one as a spare, because it is, I don't know, is that cracking there maybe? Could be cracking. So maybe I should um, replace this, put the whole piece in the other pump, in the other switch. Replace the guts over as well. I think I'll do that and just have done with it. Then maybe I'll get the other one and maybe replace the re-switches and put it as a spare. I think that might be the way to go. This is also behaving slightly differently. If you get the magnet, that's much further away. And it's also twisted, like on the other unit, on here it's sideways. The other unit's more like this. So I wonder if maybe the orientation of the reed switch is part of the problem in the other unit as well. Which is why it's a bit hard to get right. That one seems fine. It's definitely much more sensitive than the other unit. So maybe it needs new re-switches. So I'm going to hook onto these. Look at that. Look how far away I am. That is very different. So I'm guessing re-switches on the other box might be the problem. So I'm going to swap out the electronics and I'll replace the re-switches on the other one. Oh well, this will cost 240 bucks, but at least I know I will have a spare, so next time it goes, not such a big deal.